So we're here at the Earn booth, and uh, what are you talking over here? Well, I'm uh, dem demonstrating fast models, which are our high-performance simulation models of the RMIP. Um, in this case, I'm demonstrating the Cortex A57 model. A50, Cortex A57 was a, a processor we announced earlier this week. It's the first of the uh, ARM V8 cores that we're working on. So ARM fast models, ARM V8 architecture. Yeah. That's right. But how can you show stuff? It's not there. It yeah. doesn't exist. So we have a, we have a simulation model of this, uh, this pr um, processor. Typically the simulation model is available um, a year or um, thereabouts ahead of the uh, uh, silicon being available. And it provides an early software development platform for partners who want to uh, develop code or port code to run on the, uh, on the new IP. Um, in this case, um, what I'm running on the, uh, um, on the simulation model is Android. Um, it's a 32-bit Android still running on a 64-bit core, and um, as you can see from the uh, uh, the screenshot here, um, uh, so is this yeah, this is this is this is what you would be seeing on if you imagine it's a, a mobile device, a mobile phone, or a tablet. So this is your simulated screen. So this is Cortex A57. So the Cortex. Um, so this is Android running on the Cortex A57. That's yeah. how it would behave, or how yeah. do you say? Um, yeah, so basically the software that you run on here is identical with the software that you'd run on the target hardware. And so you can do all your software development in advance of having hardware available and be ready, uh, the software development teams be ready to utilize that hardware as soon as it um, and, comes into the... Uh, and for sure it's yeah. going to work. Uh, yeah, the, um, uh, we've got examples where um, customers have used this for uh, 15 months, 18 months before they've had silicon. Uh, done all the software development on this and then had running software within a couple of days of the silicon being available. Um, so they're able to develop their uh, their complete software stack in a virtual environment in advance of having a hardware target to work on. So how does the software look like? There's DS5 here. Yeah. So, so how, do, how do you connect the DS5 and all that? Okay, so the model has um, an interface on it which allows it to um, look basically like a uh, some target hardware as far as the debugger is concerned. So the debugger connects to the model as it would any, any target um, through, a, through a, an API that we've defined um, that provides the information about the uh, registers, disassembly, uh, memories um, that are in the simulation model and those are then vi viewable in the debugger. So this is DS5, what is DS5. going on behind here? Okay, what's going on behind there? These, this is actually um, this window uh, this is um, a, uh, a telnet that's attached to um, a UART. It's a telnet that's attached to a UART in the um, uh, in the simulation model. So it's showing all the messages coming out from the uh, from the Linux kernel and the uh, and Android. So telnet connection somehow. And yeah. uh, what is behind there? Um, another one. Another telnet. Another basically. one. Yeah. Um, yeah. And what, what are these numbers here? Okay, the numbers that you're seeing there are giving an instruction count about how many instructions that we've simulated and uh, how long the simulation's been running for. So you see there's, uh, if I get my numbers right, about 44,000 million instructions there. So 44 billion, 44 instructions, billion instructions. instructions so far. And that's taken about 22 minutes of simulation time to run. So, so you, you work on fast models? Yes. Yeah, I'm, uh, I, I handle uh, technical marketing for the fast models, so customer evaluations, uh, requirements, that kind of, uh, that kind so, of thing. So uh, who at ARM makes that okay. tool? So, so the models um, are written by the same teams that develop the, uh, the processor IP, and this is one of the ways that we ensure that they're 100% uh, accurate against the, uh, the processor IP, because we're using the same um, validation suites that the guys designing the, uh, the hardware, um, the implementation, um, to validate that the model is correct, and so there's a cross-reference between the implementation and the simulation model. And then that team, uh, the, the processor teams, hand off that model to the uh, uh, fast models team who change it from being something that we use internally for doing um, validation into something that we can then uh, provide to our partners for them to have a have a software development platform. So it's very high, highly advanced uh, software solutions made by ARM. That's correct, yes. Yeah. And uh, delivered 18 months before silicon? Or um, well, it will vary from core to core, but you know, 12, to, 12 to 18 months is, is pretty typical. Uh, for something like uh, Big Little, which, um, uh, which we were talking about last year, um, our internal software development team started developing software for Big Little on the FAST model um, in uh, January 2011, and the first silicon was delivered in, uh, I think it was July 2012, so that gives you an idea of the kind of 
uh, time scale between when you can start development on the model and um, when the silicon becomes available. So how much does it cost? Uh, can you st is there like a free version? There is a free version. And that's new, right? Uh, that, that is new. That is something we've uh, recently announced. Um, so there's a free version called the Foundation Model. Um, which and who, you, who would use that? Um, typically a, um, a Linux application developer would use that. So the Foundation Model is a, uh, a fixed, constrained version of the FAST model. It's uh, an executable which you can download from the, uh, from the ARM website. Uh, it's a registration process to go through first. Um, but it's free to download. Um, it's, um, it has enough um, peripherals and enough uh, uh, blocks in there to be able to boot Linux and then develop application code, um, uh, Linux applications running on the, uh, on, on the foundation model. And that's uh, Windows, Mac? Runs, it, runs, it runs on Windows and Linux. Windows and Linux? Yeah. And it doesn't run as a web app? doesn't run as a web app, no. Wouldn't that be cool? Um, yeah, we've talked about this actually, um, running this, um, uh, running this through, uh, through the cloud and having people come log on. Um, With a Chromebook? It. Yeah. And um, in fact, um, uh, our partners at uh, Linaro um, do something exactly like this. They have uh, uh, something called the um, uh, Lava, the uh, uh, Linaro Verification uh, uh, Architecture. I forget what Lava actually yeah. stands for. Um, but basically, that's a server farm that you can go run um, jobs on if you're as working. As a web app? As, um, yeah. And um, so they have, um, alongside actual physical boards for, for some of the ARM IP, for the ARM IP, which there is no hardware for yet, such as the V8 models, um, they have simulation models in that, in that simulation farm rather than the um, evaluation boards. So just to clarify, uh, people that make Android apps, mm -hmm. like the coolest biggest, mm -hmm. the best Android apps, they need to think about this because yeah. they need to be ready with their apps when the silicon arrives next year. Yeah, and the, and the great thing that this can do is um, it, le um, it, it lets you look and see how the app is interacting with the hardware, the target hardware. So there are things like the, the, um, the Android Developers Kit, which let you give you a pure software environment for developing applications. Um, this also gives you the sort of indication of how that app is interacting with the hardware. For example, are you closing off uh, bits of hardware after you've finished using them to save power? Um, and that, that kind of thing can be hard to trap in a, uh, um, in a purely, so uh, purely software environment, purely uh, software development environment. But when you start introducing all the fast models and building a virtual platform, you can see the interaction with the hardware as well, all pre-silicon. And uh, as soon as the silicon arrives, you don't use it anymore, right? But then, um, the yeah, you, you can continue to use it. You continue it to yeah. use it even um, when the and we, chips and we, are yeah. out. And so we do have a lot of people who continue to use this after there is silicon because fast model and the virtual platform is very easy to deploy to a wide range of users. You don't have any physical hardware to build, maintain, chip. Um, and so it makes it easy for somebody who's doing, say, software development at home, who may not have to have a, uh, um, access to um, an, ev an evaluation board, to be able to continue doing their, that development uh, when they don't have access to hardware. Um, I don't, a lot of people uh, frown at me for saying this, but uh, I tend to use this when I'm on the plane for doing development. So on, your, on the plane? On my, laptop, on, my, on, my, on my laptop on the plane, yeah. So, nice. Yeah. Cool. And you click and you see what happens. Okay. And if there's a bug, yeah. it would show. It would show up, yeah. Where? Yeah. Um, either by some sort of error in the, uh, the graphics window or um, going to an exception handler in the, uh, in the debug code. Um, there's a range of different ways you would, you would see, that, uh, uh, see that bug uh, being exposed. And how could you improve fast models that aren't... There's lots of things that could be done? Oh yeah, we've got lots of ideas for, um, for, for development. Um, the more we get into this, the more we, we're finding people who want to use them in different ways. And that's another of the beauties of um, a virtual environment, that um, if you want to change something to customize it to work in a different way, it's a piece of software. It's easy to change changes, recompile it, you've got a new version of the model. Whereas if you wanted to do that in a hardware world, um, you'd have a fairly lengthy process to go through to build a new evaluation board if you wanted to, to say, uh, expose some new information within the processor core to the uh, uh, to the debugger. So lots of new things are going to happen in this area. Yes, yeah. This is a, this is a focus for ARM, and it becomes more of a focus as we go forward because um, the the demands of doing this upfront software development pre silicon are becoming more and more important on our customers. Um, if you um, consider the software development um, in an yes. SOC sure. is about 50% of the cost and 50% of the time that's taken on SOC development. If you wait for the hardware to do that, 
um, you've got a very long development cycle. If you are able to do the software development in parallel with the hardware, you can shorten that development cycle and also reduce the risk that the hardware and software won't work together when the two of them finally uh, are finally brought together in the in the lab. Um, so I think it's all about reducing risk and, and improving time to market.